In this video we're going to show you how to upgrade your chain drive shoebox compressor with the new belt drive. Uh, the belt drive is quieter and requires less maintenance. There's no oiling, no chain stretch, so once you set it you can pretty much forget it. Most people purchase it because of the quietness factor. It's considerably quieter. So this is what comes in the kit. You have your belt, you have the pulley for the motor shaft, you have the large pulley here for the crankshaft, these are extensions for the motor mounting bolts. These are spacers for the motor mounting bolts. And these are some new nuts to mount the motor. So let's move that aside for the moment. Tools. First thing we're going to need is a uh, pointy object of some sort. Uh, this is a pick. But we're going to use this to scribe some lines for alignment. We're also going to need the appropriate wrenches to tighten down the motor. We're going to need the right Allen wrenches to unscrew the various bolts. We're going to need a couple of screwdrivers to undo the push nuts. A couple of flat blade screwdrivers. So let's get to work. What we've done here is we've taken a few things off of this to save time in the video. We've completely disconnected the jack shaft assembly here by unscrewing the two bolts on the bottom of the chassis. We've disconnected both of the chains. We've also taken off the motor. And before you uh, take off the motor, make sure you unplug it and drain all the air out of the system before you work on it. But when you go to unplug the motor, take off the back plate on the back of the motor and unplug these um, spade terminals in the back. Do not go into the chassis and try and undo it in the chassis anywhere. That's a big mistake. So once you have the motor off, just put the motor aside. We'll work on that in a minute. So the first thing you must do, and you can't forget this, <coughs> the very first thing is we're going to take our pointy object and we're going to go in here around the bottom of the air block and we're going to scratch a line into the red powder coating here. And you'll see some little flakes come up, that's good. And we're going to use this for alignment when we go to put this all back together. You don't have to do the back side, but you do need to do the front and the two sides here. Make sure you got a nice line. Use a pointy object so you can be precise when you reassemble it. So that's good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our two screwdrivers and we're going to put them under each side of the push nuts here and we're going to work them off. There's one. Now the push rods hold the connecting rod on. And the reason why we use these push nuts is because if something goes wrong your system jams quite often the whole assembly here will pop off on you and save you from having bent up parts that you'll have to replace. Now this connecting rod doesn't come off really easy. You have to use your screwdrivers again and kind of wedge it off a little bit at a time. And this is the way it should be because this means your bushings are nice and tight. Now inspect your bushings to make sure that they're not ovaled at all. If they are they may need replacing. Okay now we've gotten crankshaft disconnected from the pistons. So we're going to move the pistons to the right. The pistons are going to stay with the unit. We're not going to take those out. So the first thing we're going to do is come here and we're going to take off the screws on the top that hold the top of the air block. And you hear them snap loose. We don't really uh, tighten them in there as tight as you may think. The snapping is caused by the powder coating grabbing the bolts. Make sure that you use good quality Allen wrenches. You don't want to strip the bolts. <coughs> Once we have the top ones off, we're going to flip it over on its back. Now we're going to take the bottom ones off. There's one, and now you'll see that the whole air block assembly is getting loose. Take the last one off. Flip it back up. Now we can take the whole assembly and slide the whole assembly off to the left. Now notice that we've disconnected the chain in the back here previously. Okay, once we've got that, the whole assembly will slide out, and we can move the housing to the side. Okay, so here's our assembly and here's our sprocket in the back. 
Before we go to the sprocket, I want to point out that this is an aluminum plug right here, if you can see it. The aluminum plug. Underneath this plug, uh, there's an O-ring. And if there's a black O-ring underneath this plug, then you need to replace it with the white one. And the way to do that is you wrap a towel around this thing. Nice heavy towel. You put some air pressure in here. You can just put a little, about 100 pounds of pressure in here. And it'll pop this thing out and the, the towel will catch it. And you can examine it, replace it if necessary, use a little bit of grease, push it back in. And that all gets held in place when you bolt it in, in, in with the chassis. So now let's come to our sprocket. We want to remove this sprocket. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to come in and unscrew these bolts. And the bolts are loctited in so they take a little bit of effort to get loose. There's two of them. So that's off. Grab my tool. So the first thing we want to notice is that there is a flat ground here. There's actually two ground on here, but this is the one we're concerned about. This flat does not extend far enough to the bushing for the large pulley that we're going to replace here. So what you want to do is you want to take this whole thing off, bring it over to your grinder, and you want to grind about another eighth to a quarter of an inch here. Now we're not going to do that on the video, but what I'm going to show you is one that I've already done here. So we can line the two up and you can see here that one's got a little more flat on it than the other. So you just need to grind this back a little bit. So we're going to dismiss this one and we're going to use the one that I've pre-ground. And when you slide it in here you'll notice that the ground part goes all the way to the bushing. That's what you want. So now we're going to get our large pulley over here. And we want to put the pulley on. We've got a bolt in there already. We're going to slide this on here. We're going to line it up with the flat. We're going to come in with our Allen wrench and we're going to tighten it down. But we're not going to tighten it very tight. So I just snugged it up there. Okay, and you see it's, it's a little sticky. So I'm going to loosen it a little bit. I'm going to move it off just a hair. I'm going to tighten it again. And now it spins freely and you want just just a hair amount of play in there. You want it to spin freely all the way around but not have a lot of side play in this thing. So once you've got that you're good. Okay, so once you've done that now you want to come in and you want to torque this thing down. You want to torque it down pretty hard. Okay, because that's only one bolt holding the whole assembly. Okay, so now you've replaced the sprocket with the, the belt drive pulley. So now before we go to reassemble this, we want to put the belt on. You can put it on afterwards, but it's just way easier to do it now. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to come back here and remove the uh, jack shaft assembly and put it aside. We won't need that anymore. Get rid of the sprocket and we're going to pull our housing back into, into position here. Slide the assembly back in. Line it up on the pistons. Get them started in there. There we go. Now we're going to get our bolts and we're going to line them up on the top here. You see that? It's a good idea to get them started by hand so you don't mess with them. Okay, that's good. Got those started. Now let's go to the bottom. Get these started. It's already pretty well aligned. Okay. Now we're going to snug these up. Again, not super tight because we're going to check to make sure that we've got the alignment going. So we want to snug these up, rock it back up, 
And now I'm going to examine where we're lined up here with all of my scratch marks and they look pretty good. So make sure they're all lined up real well. Then go in, I'm going to go in on the top here even though you can't see it. And I'm going to tighten down the top bolts. I'm going to snug them up and again I'm going to look to check to make sure nothing's moved. We're looking good down here. Okay, now I'm going to tighten them up, crank them down. That's good. Tighten these guys up and we're good. Okay. Now we're going to go back and put the connecting rod on. Now the connecting rod, the wide bushings go in. The drop goes on the right. Wiggle it on. Once you get that on, you push the push nuts on with your wrench. There we go. We'll get this started by hand here. Okay, this wrench is a little too big, but they go on. Okay, so we've got the pulley on. Now we're going to slide this aside and take a look at the motor. We're going to have to do a couple of things to the motor. I've taken the motor apart. These are the motor bolts. Put those right here. I'm going to slide the motor over here. And we've got to put some extensions and some stuff on the motor. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of the motor bolts and we're going to take one of these aluminum, they look like a fat aluminum washer. It's a spacer. We're going to drop it on there. We're going to put the bolt in through the back this time. They came the opposite way. With the chain drives they go in the other direction. Okay, the spacer is taking up a little bit of space right here so the bolt sticks out doesn't drop into that hole. Now we're going to take one of the extensions. That's this guy right here. And we're going to screw it on to the motor bolt. And now we're going to use our wrenches. And we're going to tighten this up. Now we're going to do this for all four of them. Again, first thing, aluminum spacer. Next is the extension. Now for brevity, I'm just going to snug these up, but you'd want to tighten them up pretty good. Oops, almost forgot myself. Let's put the aluminum spacers on both these guys so I don't forget them. Okay, put the extension on. And the fourth one. So now we have four nice mounting bolts sticking out. This is going to space the motor back a little bit because we need the clearance for the pulleys. Okay, <clears throat> there you go. Now you've got your four mounting nuts. Now we're going to take the pulley and the pulley goes on with the set screws pointing out. You want to have one set screw on the flat and you push it all the way up to the stop. Once you've got it all the way up to the stop, then you can go in and tighten the set screw onto the flat part of the shaft. You can tighten it up pretty good. Go to the other side and tighten up the second set screw. <coughs> so there we go. Now we want to mate the motor with the chassis. We've got the belt in there already. So the rubber foot goes down. Clear your wires. It's a good idea to make sure your belt is on at this point. You can forget it and it'll just be more difficult later. You now want to line up your bolts. And 
get them in there. So we're good there. Now we're going to take our nuts and get them on each of the extensions here. Just uh, finger tight. It's much easier to get to these things now once you've gotten the jack shaft out of the way, which is kind of nice. And then I'm not going to try and stick the top one in there for time, but you get the idea. Okay, so now we want to uh, thread the belt on here. Slide the motor all the way over. Come on. Okay. Belt on. Get the bolt on. Belt on both sides. Now you want to slide it back over and uh, get it pretty tight. And one of the ways you can get it tight, I don't know if the screwdriver is quite big enough, but you can put the screwdriver in here and kind of wedge it against. See that? Wedge it against there. Once you've got that done, then you come in and tighten up all your nuts, and you should be good to go. Now you have to hook up the electricity. We won't again show you that, but you can see now that the belt drive is all hooked up and functional. Now this uh, belt drive is a little too loose. We'd have to make this <clears throat> stronger, but you get the idea, and for brevity, we're just going to leave it at that. So that's how you upgrade from the chain drive to the belt drive. Thanks.